Millinder, Morris, Campbell, Stonewall, and Graves. And Doug Ludo, the legendary head coach, is the call in his 33rd year, 670 career wins. As they go up against the Wildcats today, only the second ever meeting. The call controls the only contest that has been played between the two in 1997 win. Opening tip is eventually won by K-State. Coach Vitti is protesting that it was actually won by DePaul and stolen by K-State. Well, maybe he may have a case on that one, still talking to the tables. And as it is, the arrow pointed towards DePaul. Beer with an up and under drive on the left side has it blocked out of bounds and remains with K-State. Our officials today, Nick Marshall, Marty Cook, and Nikita Thompson. Down play by Goss. She will not be guarded. They go to Beard down on the left corner. Beard drives baseline, has an opening. Price for the hoop and scores. And K State is on the board. We saw that yesterday. DePaul was susceptible to direct drives. Princeton got a lot of layup opportunities yesterday in the first half. A deep three put up by Millender will miss. The rebound Ranky for K State. Outlet kicked off, and here come the Wildcats. So there they go. Quick shot right out of the gate by DePaul early in the shot clock. If left open, they're going to fire away from long distance. It's an analytic game there. Figuring more possessions, more shots, equals in the end more points. And so far, that's been true. Beard finds Jones. Wide open right side on the block, and an easy lay-in for Kaylee Jones. And K-State so far taking apart the backside of the DePaul defense and scored up it. Yeah, right there. Two opportunities in the paint, two layups. K-State zoning here to start. Down on the corner. Graves gets the man in the air. Jones, though, reacts quickly, deflects the pass in the interior. Daw quickly up the court, anticipating a pass to Beard. It's intercepted by Stonewall. She feeds it off, and a three-pointer put up and in by Shante Stonewall. Gives the uh, DePaul their first point. Four to three, K-State. And here's some pressure. Full court pressure put up by DePaul. Stonewall guarding Goff as she comes across midcourt. No trapping like Syracuse, but he gets this in-your-face man-to-man. Frankie walling the basketball to front of the DePaul bench on the right side. Gives it back to Goff. Wide open right side. Got underneath the hoop, and she'll lay it in. And it's K-State back in front, 6-3. to three. A minute into the game, two minutes into the game, and already a quick tempo. In the corner, Millinder, another three-pointer, and it's going also good. Caught in the soft spot of the zone. Millinder hammers the three, and we are tied at six. K-State can't be slow to react on those. And down play will come to Goff. K-State goes up against the pressure. Goff dealing with the lightning fast Shante Stonewall. All arms and legs, very thin and very quick. Goff wanted a lot it to Williams. Goes instead to Beard over on the far sideline. Beard thought about the baseline drive. Kicks back to Goff. Ten on the shot clock. Skip pass over left. It goes to Williams. Fakes the three. Drives to the baseline. Is double team. Williams loses the basketball underneath the hoop. Fighting for it, it comes away to DePaul. Shot clock violation anyway, as K-State had maintained possession. Instead, here come the Blue Demons. Up the court quickly. Morris pulls up, lets go, a jumper, and it's good. The freshman, Sonia Morris, is one of three freshmen to get quite a bit of playing time. And it's 8-6 in favor of DePaul. Just like that, Wildcats today pulled up and start. DePaul has answered. A 5-0 run by DePaul at the moment. K-State back with the basketball. 8-6 in favor of the Blue Demons. Williams, top of the circle, driving hard right lane line. Going up, has the ball knocked away, and it's out of bounds to K-State. Paul did not agree with that. Goff will be the one to inbound as K-State lines up near the right elbow. Looking for Williams. The lob pass over her head. Jones couldn't get there. Morris does. Morris flying up the court for blue, the Blue Demons. Shovels back to Millinder. Now Morris in the corner. She'll let go a three-pointer, and a foul is going to be called as Williams closed out late, swiping at the block and caught the arm. So a foul on Williams well away from the basket. It's the first on K-State. And that'll get Morris to the free throw line for three shots. Oh, the last couple possessions for Kansas State. K-State offense is getting bunched up on one side of the floor. They need to be able to keep their floor spacing a little bit better. Morris will make the first of three. Missouri Player of the Year, Miss Missouri Basketball, coming out of St. Charles, Missouri. One of the three talented freshmen for the Blue Demons. She has been 
starting most of the game this year. He already has four points, one more coming up. Ranky is going to come out. Christy Carr in for the first time for K-State. They trail 10-6. Morris' second or third free throw goes around the rim a few times, but does fall. Five points for Morris. And the full court pressure now applied by DePaul. K-State is doing a little bit of different look here on the inbounds. They're passing along the baseline out of bounds to each other. So Goss will stand on one side of the baseline, pass to another player out of bounds on the other side, and then they'll trigger it in. K-State trying to change it up against DePaul. 11-6, Blue Demons. K-State with a basketball, 6-10 to go, first quarter. Carr to the high left elbow. Look at the Peyton Williams. She'll drive it in the lane. Fade away, shoot, and score! <laughs> Williams' first jumper goes. 11 to 8. Back Lord, come the Blue Demons. Williams has the height advantage there in that matchup all afternoon if she wants to take it against Campbell. And getting it there is the key. Yep. Now the Blue Demons can help out K-State with an errant pass that goes out of bounds. The Wildcats will have it back. Some of the subs coming for DePaul. Rebecca Dalbin, who is a highly touted recruit coming out of Vanderbilt, graduate transfer. Former McDonald's All-American is in off the bench. Inbound play will go to Carr. Carr who is Spent some time at the point guard position, put it in for Goff when she was injured. She'll bring the ball up the court. Carr lobs it in for Jones with the block. Up strong, missed the shot. Got her own rebound and follows it in. Kaylee Jones with four, and it's a one-point game, 11 to 10. Anita Allen, who also plays quite a bit off the bench for DePaul, is up on the wing, and then she tries to pass cross court to the baseline. Williams looked like she went up for it, but immediately signaled she didn't touch it. Another turnover by the Blue Demons. And the OK State will face full court pressure to inbound underneath the end line. Now, Kansas State will not be able to do the baseline pass. They've, it only works with when the ball has gone through the hoop on a free throw or a made field goal. Correct. Inbound play will go to Car or Carr. Missy Carr coming up the court. Gets around Stonewall with ease. Good job by Carr. Ahead to Goff. Head down low to Jones. And an offensive foul is going to be called. As falling behind is Campbell, the old American, selling that she had been bumped by Kaylee Jones. Tough call on Kaylee Jones. Jeff Mitty did not like that. Second foul on the Wildcats. And a foul on East Coast player Williams and Jones. Right over right side to Allen, down to the corner. Dalman, quick trigger three, rattles in. Three threes made by DePaul to this point. They've all been from the corner. 14-10, Blue Demon. Carr nearing a double team, passes up ahead to Williams. Fired over left to Goff. Cross court looking for Beard, and Goff is too much mustard on that one. Nails it out of bounds. Kansas State down four, will leave a turn. 4.55 to go, first quarter on the K-State Sports Network from their field.
Kansas State down 14-10 with 4.40 to go in the first quarter. Brian Fuller, Randy Peterson back with you. Deep three straight on by Tanita Allen. Won't go. Par the rebound for K-State. Trying to bring the ball up the court. Fires it up ahead to Goff. Skip pass to the left. It goes to Beard. K-State has run with this lineup pretty much the entirety of time. Now Beard, a poor pass up top. Intercepted by Stonewall. He'll go coast to coast the other way and lay it in. That's the first non-two-point basket or non-three-point basket, I should say, made by DePaul yet today. Car to inbound, throws it up ahead to Beard, fires to Goff, and Kansas State will start to run numbers forward to get against this pressure. Gaston up the fr up to the free throw line area, passes left, Car a wide open three, ran it out, no good, and the rebound to Campbell. 16 to 10, DePaul trying to keep this tempo high against the Wildcats. Allen driving hard left side over Jones, shot won't go, the rebound Payton. Williams can bring it up, and she will. 3.40 to go in this first quarter. K-State down six. Cats have shot it pretty well. Five of eight from the field, and all of their points have come in the paint. That car three-pointer a moment ago was the first outside shot they've attempted. Williams, right lane line shot, terrible pass, trying to bounce one to Jones, and it gets banged off the feet of a DePaul player. Out on the left side it goes. DePaul tried to get Campbell to a three in transition. Couldn't quite get the trigger pulled off. Now it comes to Allen, a wide open look right side. Nothing but net. And a timeout by Jeff Biddy. Wildcats got mixed up defensively and an open three is down. And already DePaul hitting four of six from behind the arc against K-State. They lead it 19 to 10. Yeah, K-State has just stepped low on their rotations now, whether it's zone defense or man-to-man -man defense. They're just one step behind the passing right now as DePaul, DePaul is using the whole court as well. They're not just staying on one side of the floor. Or, or once they dump it down, it stays down. Everything on the floor. And that's that's probably the, di the most dynamic part of this DePaul offense is that they stay spread spaced out enough that it puts a lot of pressure on your defense to try and cover that real estate. Wildcat fans, catch the Jeff Mitty radio show Monday through season at 6 o'clock at Powercat Sports Grill. Coach Mitty in the breakdown last week's opponent will discuss upcoming games. Powercat Sports Grill for the Jeff Mitty show. Complete schedule starting in December. Check it out online, kstatesports.com. Click on the Fan Zone and Radio Network. K-State beats the pressure up the court to Peyton Williams with a long pass ahead against the press. Cats down nine with three minutes to go in the first quarter. Goff getting with Dolman out near midcourt. Goff crosses her over, goes left side. Down to the block, hanging jumper on its way. It's a little strong. The rebound battles for underneath the basket. Still loose, and it comes away to DePaul. Campbell up ahead. It goes to Gray. She hardly touched the basketball. Now a pass across the middle. Taken away by Allen. She'll pull up from 12 feet. Not hit. Rebound Williams had it. Standing it to Jones as she was going out of bounds. Good play by Payton. And the Wildcats back with it. Goff double team near midcourt. Williams, the late trailer, helps her out. 2.30 to go in the first. Cats down 19 to 10, and the whistle inside as Jones slashing through was trying to get loose, and I think Gray is going to get called for a personal. Yeah, Gray, Gray was holding her all the way across the lane, and in this day and age, that's not allowed anymore. All the freedom of movement for post players and perimeter players is now allowed. Goff is going to come out of the game. Here comes Beard out as well. Ranky returns, and Shadi Simmons is in for the first time for the Wildcats. Inbound play, Simmons will do the triggering, does so to Williams underneath, not a good pass. It was a line drive right at Williams and intercepted by DePaul. Got to get it up and over. Instead, a wide open three at the other end for DePaul, top of the circle, that'll miss. Rebound Payton for K-State. 2.15 to go in this first quarter, Simmons to bring it up against Dolman. Doesn't use the high screen with Williams, Simmons gets the offense started here. Cats down nine in the early going. Bounce feed up ahead, it goes to Carr. Carr with two minutes to go, shot clock at 10. Now Williams, Williams at the free throw line, working her way down to the post, turns, goes up high off the glass, not there, and Jones trying to get the rebound is called for an over the back foul, and that's gonna be Kaylee Jones' second. She's gonna have to come out. Mary Lynch to the scores table. Here comes Gaston Beard in for Williams. So two new post players for K-State now. Beard and Lake manning the middle. Yeah, this is, this is going to put a lot of stress on Mary Lake's defense. She's going to have to cover a lot of ground instead of just staying in the paint in, in a 2-3 defense. Good ball fake. Got a shot open for Heal, but she didn't take it. Instead over to the right side. 
Drive and a kick by Beckerla. Now over the far side to Held. Baseline. Jumper by Graves is good. The pulling legs away for the basket. Graves hits a 21-10 first quarter by DePaul against the Wildcats. Minute 20 to go in this first half, in the first quarter, I should say. Lob to Lake. Down on the block. Lost it for a moment. Gets it back and powers it up and in. Mary Lake with 21 to 12. That ends a little bit of the bleeding. 10 to 2 run now by DePaul with that basket. Extra pass finds Graves. The corner three. The air ball. The rebound to Ranky. A minute to go in this first quarter. Ranky lobs it up ahead to Simmons as K State beats the pressure. Lake screaming for the basketball down on the left block. Ranky trying to feed it to her. They find Lake. She's going up. She's stripped of the ball. Graves comes in there as she turned and just knocked it out of her hands. 40 seconds to go in this first quarter. Over left side. Allen left open for a three-pointer. That'll miss long. The rebound. Ranky couldn't get it, and it's out of bounds to K-State as it went off of Held. 34.5 seconds remaining in the first. K-State with the basketball, but a 4.5 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. So K-State cannot hold for the final shot of the quarter. Parr dealing with Lexi Held, a freshman in the backcourt, will just dribble it up against her across the timeline and find Simmons. Simmons over to the right side, just being man-grabbed by Stovall, no whistle. Now they're just on Beard, a wide open three-pointer. Beard will miss. Lake's trying to get the rebound, can't collar it. Graves does, and here come the Blue Demon. In transition, Stovall, Beckova pulls up for a three. It's off the backboard, no good. Rebound, Simmons. Simmons will just hold on to the basketball and let the quarter expire. K-State got to a good start, but then DePaul found their win. DePaul hits four of their first six three-pointers and hit K-State with a 10-0 run to take a 21-12 lead. 21-12 in favor of DePaul as we head to the second quarter on the K-State Sports Network from Learfield. Second quarter starts with an inside feed by DePaul to Graves against Mary Lakes, and Lakes fouls Graves on the layup well after the basket was already gone and made, so the three-point play converted by Graves. And it's 24 to 12 in favor of DePaul as K-State will try to get the ball in against a five count. Carr just saving it, finds Goff, and Goff racing up the court the other way, goes all the way to the basket, misses the layup, and the rebound to DePaul. 
Bobcats do not want to play at this pace. They're just not built to be able to race up and down the court at the speed that the two big blue demons are playing at. And Team State has struggled. Beard intercepts a cross-court pass and is off to the races the other way and lays it in. Well read by Jason Beard. And the redshirt junior has four, 24-14. Now getting back, Blue Demons go quickly with a three-pointer, and the ball knocked out off the mid to the Wildcats. Simmons is coming back in for K-State. They check in for Goss. It's a great job by Beard of not getting hypnotized with the ball going sideline to sideline the way DePaul was, was able to play in that first quarter. They were just able to keep K-State's defense below the free throw line and keep throwing the ball back and forth. Beard finally anticipated it, got that easy layup. Simmons to inbound, we'll go to Carr right in front of the K-State bench. Ahead to Beard, and up to Ranky. He'll pull up for a long three, that'll be in and out, no. Lake unable to get the rebound, and DePaul comes away with it for Shante Stonewall. Good to see though that Ranky had no fear, quick trigger on that. No doubt, uh, pass by Campbell intended for Graves, who had beaten Lakes well down the court. They zipped it out of bounds with a turnover. By DePaul is a break, and K-State gets the ball back. The Cats already with nine turnovers in this first half against this pressure defense. It seems to have caused more issues than Syracuse yesterday. K-State now in danger, he's got to get the ball up the court. Beard fires it all the way up to Carr. Carr will pull up left lane line and airball a shot. The rebound, Campbell at 5'10", steps in front of Lake and takes it away. To the corner, wide open, a three-pointer for Millender. Nothing but net. Five of 12 now on DePaul from behind the arc. Inbound play will be thrown into the front court for Simmons. Simmons goes all the way to the paint. Shut off, out to Beard. Beard now to Ranky. Ranky lets go another three-pointer. It's way off the mark. Rebound long towards the DePaul bench and out of bounds to the Blue Demons. 27-14 in favor of DePaul with 8.07 to go here in the second quarter. Lakes is out, Williams is returning and here comes Goss back in again. Kaylee Jones with two fouls on the bench for K-State. So one of their top energy players and rebounders is on the court or on the bench. K-State staying with this 2-3 matchup zone. Over on the far side, Stonewell now to Campbell. She'll shoot a really long three-pointer. That'll rattle out. Rebound battle above the head of Beard out of bounds to DePaul. Marquette has cooled off a little bit, seven of 17, 41%. They've yet to hit a three. They have out rebounded the Blue Demons, 11 to eight. But the Blue Demons hitting them hard from behind the arc. Marte Graves, a travel up high. Was gonna step into a three, but then decided to drive and doing that, she took a step. And that's the length of Peyton Williams, I think, affecting that. She was able, she was, was one step away to contest the shot. Graves saw her out of the corner of her eye. Shuffled her feet on the drive. So the Cats down 13. We'll bring the ball off the court here with 7.46 to go in the second quarter. Goss hands off to Ranky. Just so much contact, Brian, on this, this end of the floor. Can't believe there aren't more fouls. Hand check calls, folks. And now Savvy calls for a travel as two defenders ran at her on the wing. She thought about a three, then pulled it down. K-State commits their 10th turnover. I agree with you that if this was a Big 12 regular season game, there would be fouls racking up left and right for DePaul, but here in this tournament, they have allowed them to play, so to speak. This has kind of been old school women's college basketball. Stonewall, a three-pointer from the corner, will miss the ball out of bounds to K-State. Carr returning for Simmons. Wildcats have stayed pretty much about seven deep, maybe eight with Lakes occasionally. And their depth taking a big hit. Simone Goodrich again in street clothes again today. Her status appears to be in question for this tournament. Carr across the timeline, driving hard towards the basket, just railroads the defender with the block. All for making a play, but the defender had set up on the block right about the time Carr crossed mid-court. Might be, be a little more recognition of that, I would think. Well, the Kansas State bench is asking why are why is the defender on her hip allowed to push her all the way down the floor and speed her up that way? That's supposed to be outlawed. You're not supposed to be able to have your hand on the defender or the offensive player guiding them. 
physical as DePaul has been, they have one foul this entire game. One. Morris goes up left side, shot blocked by Carr, and Williams able to get it. Williams gets out of trouble in the backboard, will bring the ball to court, and now a whistle. You gotta be kidding me, that's a foul? As Williams goes up the court, now we finally see one of the hand check fouls called. Stonewall, the guilty party, has only the first foul of the second quarter, just the second of the game on the call. 27 to 14, Blue Demons. 6.47 to go, second quarter. Reminiscent of the old Eddie Sutton days of Oklahoma State on the men's side was just gonna foul you repeatedly every up every opportunity and make the officials call it. If they're not gonna call it, then they're just gonna keep fouling you. Carr down to the corner, in some trouble. Now to Goss, get past him and all the way near side is airmailed out of bounds. It's the second time that Goss trying to reverse the court has fired a pass. 10 to 12 feet off the ground and nowhere close. Allen returns for Grace for DePaul. DePaul is an undersized team. They don't have really anybody over six foot. Grace is 6'2", but Blade Ben, they really look to spread you out. Five shooters all over the court. Good pass going to the baseline. DePaul, or Beer goes up high and knocks it away from Millender, the redshirt senior who's just 5'8". 27 to 14 though, DePaul, 6.19 to go, second quarter. Inbound play, Stonewall fires it right back down to the corner to Campbell, fed down to the post, Allen, backing out against Williams, now to Campbell. Allen couldn't get open to Dolan, now down to Stonewall, shot clock at 10, Stonewall turns, line driver short, rebound Carr, fading out of bounds, finds Ranky, and Ranky gets stripped of the basketball by Stonewall, just knocked it right out of the hands, a Rachel Ranky. Allen now shoots a three-pointer left side. That won't go. Rebound car in position, and a foul is called over the back on DePaul. That's on Stonewall. That's her second. And she has two of the three fouls that have been called on DePaul. And K-State has the possession. Stonewall's going to come out. Gray's return. And the unique thing there on that DePaul possession, they had three post touches on that that and backed it out all three times. Had no interest at all of trying to take a mid-range shot. They're looking for a three or a layup. Inbound play will go to Beer. She'll bring it up the court for the Wildcats. Goss trying to get free near mid-court. Beer picked up her dribble in a bad spot. Shovels it out to Ranky just before a five count. Rachel dribbling on the right side, crossing over into the lane, spinning towards the baseline, a wild layup, hoping for a call, doesn't go, and Rachel Ranky wipes out underneath the basket. Sees part to find Allen at open three, top of the circle. That won't go, and an over the back foul on Gray. So three quick fouls of DePaul here in the second quarter, a couple of them on over the back plays, trying to get a rebound off a of missed three. And that's a starting four of six. DePaul has hit a cold stretch with just one of the last ten, but the Wildcats, equally ice cold, have hit just one of their last seven shots overall. They still trail by 13. They've been able to make up no difference in the score. And down play to Beer. She is hard, undercut right near midcourt by Allen. Well, I hope Deshaun Beard is all right. Wiped out by Allen near midcourt. Beard gets up, holding her right hip. Smile on her face. Beard almost always has a smile on her face, and that's a good sign. Now I'm trying to shake it off a little bit. And Miss Marshall says, let's give her a time here just to make sure she's all right. Foul on Allen reserved first. Fourth foul on DePaul, so now the bonus from here on out. Can K-State coax another foul out of DePaul? This could be a way to get back in the game at the free throw line. Gar bringing it up, and now she dribbles it off her own foot right out of bounds. No, it went off of the foot of a defender, thankfully. Went off the foot of Bekela. Thing is, K-State only has three seconds now to get it across the midline. Does not reset to a ten, full 10 seconds. That's a new rule this year. Goss got a hurry. Goss loses the dribble in the backcourt, fires it up the floor, and K-State does not get it across in time. 10 second count. Turnover number 15 in the first half by the Wildcats. The problem there was Instead of getting a penetrating pass up the floor, K-State went back towards the DePaul basket. 
Corner three-pointer by Dolman. Too long, and the rebound out of bounds to K-State. And DePaul giving K-State every opportunity to get back in the game. They have shot just one of their last 11 from behind the arc. 17 of their 25 shots have been three-pointers. K-State's done absolutely nothing on the offensive end. Carr trying to sell it to his foul. Beard will bring the ball up the court. Fires a no-look pass left side. It's intercepted by Tanita Allen. Ahead to Held and, or Bekela, and she'll lay it in. 29 to 14 in favor of DePaul. 4.43 to go before the half. Here's Doss across midcourt into the front line. Catches up ahead to Williams, who easily lays it in. If Keith State can beat the pressure, they have easy layups at the other end. They just can't get that far. Backcourt of DePaul has been that much of a problem. Baseline drive, a high archer by Campbell, not there. The rebound to K-State. Williams facing a double team, passes ahead to Doss. Doss over to the left corner. Carr lights up a three-point shot. No, back iron, the rebound to DePaul. K-State over five from beyond the arc. 29-16, Blue Demons. Back of the, off a curl, a wide open jumper, Tanzan. Oh, you feel like you do all that work to get an open look, and then defensively DePaul just comes down and drills a jumper. And that's timeout, I think, by K-State, or is it a five second count? Five seconds. 3.51 to go in the second quarter. Cats turn it over again. They're down 31-16 in the K-State Sports Network from their field. After coming back from break, Dolman firing up a three-pointer for the Blue Demons. Goes errant, out of bounds. K-State with the basketball, but 16 turnovers against this DePaul pressure defense has limited the Wildcat attack to 16 points. They trail 31-16 with 3.35 to go in the second quarter. Doss, backdoor cut, finding Ranky, going up for a shot. She'll miss it, gets fouled, and then will head to the free throw line for two. Ranky yet to score. Had only five points in the game yesterday against Syracuse on two of eight shooting and one of seven from behind the arc. And now Ranky to the strike for K-State's first free throws of the day. It's a good play out of the timeout there. K-State gets the defense to stop and then turns around and runs a backdoor play on along the baseline. And the free throw by Ranky is good. So Ranky now with her first basket, K-State's first free throw. The Wildcats did well at the line yesterday. And made all but one, 13 of 14 in stripe. Ranky makes both of her free throws here today. At the fifth foul a moment ago on DePaul. So K-State again, if they can get another foul out of DePaul, unless it's a player control foul, will be at the free throw line. 
Lou Demons against the 2 3 matchup zone. Go to the right corner. Allen, an open three pointer. That's good. And DePaul remains hot from beyond the arc. 6 to 19 from long distance. And now an inbound play by Ranky thrown away. 17 turnovers by the Wildcats. Inbound play, Bacula, Ranky falls asleep, and the inbound play to a wide open three point shot. Bacula buries it, and it's 37 to 18 DePaul. Williams up the court against the full court pressure to Goff, left side. Now to Ranky, answer three pointer right side, well short. Rebound, Jones had it off her own leg, and it's out of bounds. I think they might say it could have deflected off a DePaul player. Jones was claiming that was the case. And they're going to say it is K-State basketball. 2.35 to go in the quarter. K-State down 19 to DePaul, 37 to 18. Goff will inbound on the sideline to Williams. Hands it back to Kayla Goff, who looks over to Jeff Mitty. Foot of foot. Silverball right up on Goff. Goff trying to go on a crossover, loses the basketball, picks it back up. And then a tie-up is called, and Snowball just pushes Goff over to get to the basketball. Harrell favors K-State. The frustrating part is Stonewall originally establishes contact with the one hand, takes it off, and then proceeds to put her hand back on her again, and there's no call. And that, that stuff was outlawed two years ago. Right. You cannot reestablish a hand on the player. Ranky on the inbound, the shot clock winding down, the ball goes up. Ranky badly misses a three. K-State with a little trapping defense of their own, and now we'll get a timeout for DePaul. Jeff Mitty claiming how could that be a timeout? The ball wasn't even in the possession of the player. Jeff Mitty is all the way out in midcourt, firing up on the official. Sitting on the basketball, and K-State had their hands on the ball, and they're considering sitting on the ball more possession than hand. Players are the ones that are allowed to call timeouts, not coaches, by the way. And so the timeout will be granted. 2.14 to go here in the second quarter, 37 to 18 in favor of DePaul. With each and every three-point make by the Wildcats this season, our Powercat Health partners, Stormont Vale Health and the Candace Health Foundation are collectively donating $30 to a community health project. Learn more about eating healthier, living better, and exercising regularly, and enter, enter to win great prizes at kstatesports.com backslash Powercat Health. Wildcats have still not been able to find their outside shooting. 0 of 7 today in, in a three-point battle against DePaul. They are losing lopsidedly. Lead even 7 of 20 from behind the arc. Truthfully, that's been the difference in the game, that of that pressure defense by DePaul. Frenetic press and three-point shots, lots of them. Millender thought about a quick three left side, now forced to pass it to the right side of Stovall, looking into the post. That's only a glance. The three-point shot is all it's about for DePaul. Here it is, a corner three, Bacala, good! Ten for D. Bacala. 40 to 18, DePaul. Eight threes in the first half of the Blue Demons. And now Stovall comes all the way out high and grabs Peyton Williams and commits a foul. And that's going to put Williams at the line for two. Peyton Williams did not look overly pleased at Stovall just coming in and scratching at her, trying to get the ball knocked away. For what it's worth, Doug Bruno did not very happy with this freshman either. Williams to the free throw line, and she'll easily make the first. One more coming up. Jones with her two fouls was in for K-State. Now she'll come out. Beard returns. A minute 41 to go before the half. It's 40 to 19 to Paul. One more free throw by Peyton Williams. That is true. Cats perfect from the line. Williams has six. 40 to 20 to Paul. Taking it to the Cats here in the first half. Allen up top Stovall. Allen trying to get free for a three-pointer. Here's Dolman. Late drive and a kick out over left. Somebody fell down on the paint. That was Carr. It recovers. Dolman down to the baseline. Nowhere to go. Out to Allen. Fadeaway three-pointer. Good again. Tanita Allen hits the ninth three in this first half. 
by DePaul. Goff against the pressure, beats him up the court, finds Beard left side, and Beard traveled with it before getting to the basket. Beard kind of did that power move, the two-handed dribble down on the ground, trying to go up strong, but took a big step beforehand. And K-State, coupled with nine threes by DePaul, have committed 18 first-half turnovers. DePaul, DePaul right now with 21 points off of K-State's turnovers. Goff, weak side helps on a Dolman drive to the hoop, blocks the shot. 43 to 20 DePaul, K-State with the basket, or with the basketball, a chance at the last basket. Beard on the left side, K-State had gone fast, they may have been able to have two for one instead. Carr, right side three, an air ball, and picked out of there by DePaul, who now they can hold for the last shot. Shot clock is off, 20 seconds remaining in the period. 43 to 20 in favor of the Blue Demons. Allen, up top, back of the, now to Dolman, trying to drive on Carr to the basket. That's blocked by K-State, and the foul. Foul will be on Carr. It'll be her first, or second, I should say. And two free throws coming up for Dolman. What a story. McDonald's All-American, two-time Minnesota Basketball Player of the Year. Went to Vanderbilt, had to Richard her first year, blood clot. And so came back from that, earned SEC freshman team member uh, honors, played sparingly as a junior and a sophomore, then the graduate senior transferred to DePaul. First half will end, Kayla Goff near midcourt will let it fly, it will miss. And we are at the break, 45 to 20, what a half by DePaul as they dominate the Wildcats, forcing 18 Wildcat turnovers and hitting nine three-point shots. We'll break it down when we come back on the K-State Sports Network from their field.
along with Randy Peterson, Zach LaPierre in our studios. Kings State with their same starting five back out there. Same for DePaul as well. Why not? They live by 25 at the break. A lot of work for K-State to do as we begin the second half. DePaul with the basketball to begin. Kings State has come out in man-to-man -man defense. Trying to change it up. Graves will let go a three-pointer. That won't go. And the rebound plucked out of the sky by Beard. K-State's done a good job on the glass. A few opportunities that have been there. Screen set high for Goff. She'll rub it off. Go over to Williams. Peyton starting to work right lane line out to Ranky. Rachel into the free throw line area. Spinning on her man. Goes up hard off the glass. Won't hit the shot. And a rebound foul on Jones. Coming over the back. And that's a quick third foul on Kaylee Jones. That's where some of the activity from Jones can kind of get her into trouble. But she doesn't get get position and she has a tendency to go over the back. Stonewell in the corner driving on Jones for the basket and a foul call as she goes up for the shot. I think this might have been some of the concern by K-State in trying to go man today working against DePaul. They are so fast that if you go man the ability to stay with people could result in a lot more fouls and that foul called on Jones and so right away two fouls on Kaylee Jones so a team in DePaul that returns four starters eight letter winners from a year ago a savvy play there by Stonewall knowing Jones in foul trouble just comes right at her and has the fourth foul committed Jones is going to come out Carr is going to come in first free throw good for Stonewall one more coming up and she makes both five for Shante Stonewall he came into the play today with two straight double-figure games. K-State against the pressure, down 47 to 20. Carr picked up her dribble in a really bad spot. Goff will dribble all the way up, get it up ahead to Beard. Pull-up jumper from eight feet on the baseline won't go. The rebound, Stonewall. DePaul quickly back with Morris, trying to feed the paint. Got the ball deflected right back to her, and she follows it all the way to the cup and lays it in. A lucky break for Morris. Not that DePaul needed that, 49 to 20. They're up by 29 on K-State. Goff ahead to Ranky, left wide open. She'll take the three-pointer and hit it. Wildcats finally hit their first three. It's their first in nine tries. It's 49-23. Well, hopefully that can get Rachel Ranky to see the basket a little bit better and in a little bit more of a positive light for her. Gray's driving on Williams. The ball deflected out by Goff as Gray's tried to pass out to the wing. Now at this point, you're, like you said, you're trying to find positives to build on for tomorrow in the final game of the tournament. Frankie had come into play today just 7 of 26 from behind the arc, and she had missed her first four threes today. So 7 of 30 from beyond the arc this season. That's just in real play. She had also had some struggles in exhibition play as well. Morris driving in, has the ball deflected. On the pass out, Campbell into the lane. Jump pass right, Graves is open for a three-pointer. That's long, and the rebound, Goff had it knocked away, out of bounds to K-State. So, 8 one to go in the third, 49-23. K-State trailing with the basketball now again the full-court pressure. And Carr going to get called for an offensive foul. Carr was trying to get open and just had that arm up and just shoved Campbell away. And the All-American has done that a couple of times. Campbell crumpling to the ground as if she's been shot and gets the foul call. So Carr now has three. And DePaul's another possession. And that might be a little bit of freshman frustration there. But out, Carr trying to duplicate it. Doesn't do a fall very well inside. The refs don't fall for it. The rebound to DePaul. The ball deflected out off of Peyton Williams. Will be to K-State or to DePaul. The learning process. And that's part of the growth. But K State, while bringing back a big three in Williams, Ranky, and Goff, so much youth on this team as well. On the inbound play, Grays gets underneath wide open and lays it in without issue. And now we're going to get a foul on DePaul grabbing. Be on Campbell trying to grab Carr as the KC tried to inbound it. 7.46 to go in the third, 51 23 DePaul. Goff, double team coming towards her. Goff, jump pass up ahead to Carr, now to Beard. 
in case they get the offense cranked up. Goff gets it back near center circle. 15 on the shot clock. Pass to Williams, left side of the paint. Easy lay-in. Eight for Peyton. Now Williams just walked her defender right up the lane line and got the lob pass from Goff. Millinder with a pass over right side to, to Graves. Now to Campbell. 51-25, K-State trailing, 7-13 to go in the third. Campbell against Goff, nowhere to go, out to Stonewall, fadeaway three-pointer, well long, and the rebound to Williams. Gets the pass out ahead to Goff, up the floor to Beard, K-State beats the pressure, Beard all the way to the basket, uncontested, can't make the layup, and the rebound to DePaul. 51-25, Blue Demons back with it. Grays, cross-court pass, near side, Millinder lines it up, hits a three. 10 threes now for DePaul, 54 to 25 in favor of the Blue Demons. DePaul is just so good at taking advantage of your mistakes. Goff able to beat everybody up the floor and Beard is bumped as she makes the layup. That's the best King State's looked against the press all day. They get the easy and one chance and Beard lays it in. The foul on DePaul will put Beard at the line for the first time today. The foul was on Morris, it's her first. Goff looks gassed. She's going to come out. Carr has returned. And Beard to the free throw line. Mary Lynx coming to the scores table as well as Beard's free throw is nothing but net. Seven for Jason Beard, who had 12 points and five boards yesterday and went six of six at the stripe. 54 to 28 in favor of DePaul. 6.32 to go in the third. Savvy Simmons into the game for K-State, along with Lakes. Back to the zone for the Wildcats. Allen, baseline, out of Dolman. Top of the circle, passes to Stonewall, extra pass to Allen, back to Stonewall. Thought about the three, it popped right out of her hands. Couldn't quite get the shot going. Campbell left wide open, will turn around and bury an 18-foot jumper. And with the analytics, that's probably a bad shot. Yeah, that's right kind of shot you want the ball to shoot. 18 foot jumpers, not three pointers, not layups. Inbound play, Ranky, no look pass to Lakes, loses it, and it goes to Beard, who finds the basket for a lay-in. Lucky break for the Cats, nine now for Beard, 56 to 30. They stayed in this zone, trying to slow down DePaul. Campbell on the near side. Over right, that goes to Allen. She'll shoot a long contested three that'll miss the rebound to Chrissy Carr. Carr with a wolf behind her, comes in up the floor to the left side, shovels out the Ranky, transition three, it's good! And finally the Wildcat faithful who are here in throws have something to cheer about as K-State starting to make a little run here. It's fun to see that combination work together too. Stonewall answers with a free throw line jumper at the heart of the zone the other end. 58-33, K-State in front, or down I should say to DePaul. Beats the pressure with Simmons up in front of the Wildcat bench. Savvy into the free throw line area, will back it out. Five minutes to go in the third quarter, 58-33 in favor of DePaul. Carr up near midcourt now, guarded by Dahlman. Pass up to goes to Beard. Beard will take her man all the way to the basket, going up for the shot, and the foul will be called. Kate State to the free throw line when we come back. 4.45 to go in the third. Kate State down 58-33 on the Kate State Sports Network from their field.
Now he may have jinxed Jason Beards. He missed their first free throw of the tournament. Just comes back out of this timeout. Kansas State down 58-33 to DePaul. And now Beard will miss the second. So two missed free throws by Beard. He's a pretty good free throw shooter. And DePaul right back at K-State. Wildcats have gone back to zone. They played man for a better part of this third quarter. Didn't seem to be much at all. They have made a little bit of a resurgence here with their zone. Dahlman on the right side. Passes out to Campbell. Goff not on the floor during this run for K-State. Nor Williams. Campbell trying to get it down to the post. Shovel pass inside. Stolen away by the Wildcats. Simmons up ahead to Carr. Trying to hit Beard. Instead, Carr pulls up for a three. In and out, no good. And the rebound taken out of there by DePaul. Just no luck right now for Carr. Yesterday and today, she's had a number of three-pointers rattle in and out. That one looked pretty good. It was right in front of us. Still a quick shot. K-State may have been able to work some clock and have a better opportunity there. Beard trying to get a steal. Forces a high pass from Bekova over to Campbell. And it sails out of bounds for K-State. So the chance to get the ball back. 58-33. K-State with 19 turnovers in the game, but notably only one here in the second half. Inbound play. Simmons will throw the backcourt to Ranky. 3.50 to go in the third quarter. The pressure by DePaul, while still there, has not been quite as intense as it was in the first and second quarters with the lead pushing 30. Carr to Beard. Right side near the right elbow. Jumper on its way. Good for Beard. 11 for Jason Beard. It's 58 to 35 with 325 to go in the third quarter. And that jab step lost the defender completely, allowed her for that wide open 15 foot jumper. Cats have hit four of the last five shots on the offensive side. Dahlman on the right wing, trying to get Stonewall inside the post, skip pass over to Campbell, near wing. Now to Dahlman again, she crosses through, working against Carr, nowhere to go. Campbell. Backs out, shot clock at one. Campbell's contested shot not there, and a foul on K-State. Campbell goes in with just a wild shot and gets bailed out with a foul call. <laughs> foul on Beard is her first. And the third foul on K-State. Jeff Betty, I think if this was a closer game, would argue quite a bit more. Again, Campbell was just wild out of control, just leaning into Beard, throwing up a shot, hoping for a call. Beard was trying to run out of the way. And, and the ball ended up in Beard's throat. She can't breathe right now and was trying to regain her breath because it ended up in her throat. And it wasn't even much of a shot. Campbell makes the first free throw, has one more coming up, five points for the preseason All-American and Big East player, All-Big East player. And they gave her a three on that. Oh, my. Three free throws for Campbell, no less. And she makes all three. And Jeff Mitty not happy with Nikesha Thompson. She comes back up the court, the referee. 61-35, three minutes to go in this third quarter. This state will inbound to Rachel Ranke. Facing a double team, ahead to Carr, now to Beard. Cats get across midcourt. Beard dribbling all the way inside, finds Mary Lakes, goes up, strong and scores. And when the Cats beat the pressure, they are almost uncontested with a layup. The other end, a pull-up three-pointer by Millender, well off. Frankie tips the rebound to DePaul instead of grabbing the basketball. DePaul gets it back. Ball bounded off the long rebound right to Ranky, but inexplicably she batted the ball in towards the backcourt. No DePaul player. I'm not sure if she thought somebody was running out or just felt like she couldn't get to it. Graves on the right side, past the paint, stolen by Jason. Here goes Beard, all the way the other way. Layup is good. Well, Beard taking over here in the third quarter has got 13 points, 61 to 39. Dolman in a three-pointer. Well short. Rebound. Pass Lakes. Out to Simmons for K-State. Savvy with a pass ahead to Beard. A minute 50 to go in the third. Jason lobs it low for an alley into Mary, and it's out of bounds. Not a bad idea. With Lakes such a severe size advantage inside, but the pass just well too tall. 61 to 39. K-State trailing. A minute 48 to go in the third quarter. They 
We're trending at the half, 45 to 20. They've almost doubled their output here in this third quarter. Uh, and going forward, Beard will probably wait for Lakes to establish post position going in future games before she passes her the ball. Allen, a jump shot in the lane, that won't go. Rebound to Allen. Stallman lines up a three-pointer, that's short. Rebound, Lakes gets it for K-State and had it ripped out by a DePaul player. It stays with the Wildcats. A minute 25 to go in the third, 61-39. Subs coming in for the Wildcats. Peyton Williams, Kayla Goff, Simmons and Beard will come out. Beard getting a round of applause and a, hand, a handshake from Jeff Mitty as she comes out. Great work by Jason Beard. Haven't seen much of the combination this season of Williams and Lakes together on the floor and I guess we won't now since Ray's been subbed in. We did see one of the best plays of the season between Williams and Lakes against UMKC. That's with right. Williams wrapping the ball around two defenders to find her. Wonderful pass. Peyton took the great pass from post. 61-39. Goff will bring the ball up the court against moderate pressure. Ashley Ray in. Back cut. Not there. Goff has to pass. Finds Williams. Williams right around to the block. Goes up strong. Lays it up. Missed it. Williams gets the rebound. Puts it on the floor. Reverses. Goes up again. And scores. And Peyton back in double figures. It's her ninth straight double figure game going back to last season. 61-41. K-State trailing by 20. Here in the third quarter with 50 seconds left. Held to Campbell. Three-pointer left side is short. Rebound. K-State. No, it's Graves for DePaul. Can't hit the follow with a foul on the Wildcats. I believe that's on ranking. It is. And that'll put Graves to the free throw line. First personal foul on Ranky. Graves already one of one at the strike. And the free throw by Graves is good. Monte Graves, preseason all Big East pick. First team selection a year ago. And she makes both nine points for Graves. 63 to 41 to Paul. Baseline, Ranky passing over to Ashley Ray. Has to get out of the air to Williams. Ray's got wide open position down the block, but the Cats didn't see her. 30 seconds to go in the third. Goff working out high against Held. Shot clock is at 10. Down to the baseline. Goff to try to feed a pass to Williams. It was not close. Paul was all over it. They swarmed the ball when Goff and Williams are anywhere near it. They know and have well scouted K-State. Those two players are pivotal to the success of the Cats. Miller trying to get free for a three-pointer. In the corner, it's held that'll let go one at the buzzer. It won't go. Allen's followed. They're going to say is good. The officials will talk about it. It didn't look like there was any doubt that ball was after the shot. They're going to wave it off. So that basket won't count. We are at the end of the third. It is 63 to 41 in favor of DePaul. When we come back at the K-State Sports Network from their field.
Ron Smoller, Randy Peterson, Zach LeCure in our studios. We welcome you back to the fourth quarter here in Cancun. K-State trailing six in Frank DePaul, 63 to 41. Chrissy Carr headed to the free throw line looking for her first points of the morning. After a foul by the Blue Demons, Carr was on a back cut, able, unable to hit a layup, but on the follow, Morris committed the personal foul, the first by the Blue Demons in the fourth quarter, as we just got in, and Carr makes the first free throw and makes the second. But Carr in the scoring column for the first time, two points for her, it's a 20-point game, 63-43. Cats have trailed by as many as 29 points. Gray as will turn, shoot a three-pointer, that'll miss, and the rebound to Ranky. Just one of 12 are the Blue Demons here in the second half from behind the arc. Running the court, Williams catches on the block, facing a double team. No look pass finds Ashley Ray wide open. She has some trouble catching it, but eventually finds the possession and lays it in. Almost a three-second count while she's trying to gather the ball around her neck. Great job there from Ashley, though, running the floor. No doubt, and a great job by Williams, who again, passing is so good once she gets doubled in the post. And it shows K-State, if they can beat the guard pressure and get to the front court, they've got easily a height advantage and layups on the other end, 63 to 45. K-State is shooting over 60% here in the second half, but have only trimmed the gap to 18. Up top it goes to Morris, into the high post, Stonewall trying to look inside the gray. Morris had the ball knocked away, gets it back over right side, away, Ranky went for a steal, leaves Campbell open, and she buries a three-pointer. Just the second three of the second half for DePaul in 12 tries, 66 to 45. But it's now 11 threes down for DePaul in the ball game. Williams will hand off to Goff, who gets across midcourt. And K-State sets up their offense. Stonewall reaches in and commits the personal out near midcourt. Now, the frustration point for K-State on that is that has been occurring all it's game long. That happened in the first quarter when Z one foul was called on DePaul. It happened in the second quarter when five fouls were called on DePaul. Now, all of a sudden, it's a foul. Goff working against Stonewall again, driving left side, pulls up for a six-foot jumper, can't hit it, DePaul gets the rebound. Out and running the other way with Morris. Two-man game with Campbell, blocked from behind by Kayla Goff, picked up by Ashley Ray. Wonderful recovery by the All-American Goff. Eight minutes to go in the fourth, 66 to 45. DePaul still in front by 20. Here's Goff looking over to the right side. Williams slips the pick, but couldn't get open. Goff over to the left side now. She'll drive left lane line, spinning in the paint, goes up with an off-balance shot. Ray, the rebound, puts it up and in! <laughs> Ashley Ray with four points. 66-47. Wildcat fans trying to spur on a fourth quarter comeback here. Campbell on the left side looking in. Against it, 2 3 zone. DePaul doing a good job of taking the air out of the basketball, whether by design or not. And a pass to the baseline flat is intercepted by Ranky. DePaul is definitely a team that would prefer to play high paced, frenetic basketball for 40 minutes. I don't think they're real comfortable with slowing this down. Williams, top of the circle, looking for Ray in the post. Instead, over left, it goes to Kayla. Goff with Williams coming over to set a screen. Goff, a uh, fake of a hard drive, now to Carr. Carr will drive all the way to the basket, scooping wild layup, not there. The rebound taken by the Blue Demons. They're out and running again. Morris over left side, Stonewall. Grays, extra pass to Milliner. Ball fake at a three-pointer, short. Rebound, kept by Blue Demons, kept in play by their bench. And no reset. 6.30 to go with a fourth. Grays wide open to the corner, let's go a three. That rattles in. And a timeout by Jeff Biddy. We'll take it as well. 6.23 to go. K-State down 69-47 on the K-State Sports Network from their field.
down 69-47 with 6.15 to go in the fourth quarter. The Savvy Simmons now in running the point for K-State. We'll turn it over on the bounce pass intended on the wing for Beard. DePaul with a run out the other way. Gets an easy lay-in with Dolman, who has seven off the bench for DePaul. Starlines for the Ray Peterson back with you. It's been all DePaul really from the get-go. 71-47 in favor of the Blue Demons, who are ranked 16th of the country and are putting on quite a show today. After a struggle in game one against Princeton, they look very much a different team today. It'll be quite a matchup between them and Syracuse tomorrow. Simmons trying to get through a screen, and a foul is going to be called on Dolman of the ball. And the grabbing of, of K-State has been occurring all game long. It's just somewhat arbitrary when it gets called. Well, and the frustration for the K-State bench is that it's it's cutters out in the middle of space. You can clearly see that they're having trouble getting past the defender, and the defender's impeding them with no call. There's Stovall again, got the arm, right arm on, all the way on him. On Simmons the whole time, that's a foul. Not called, handoff will go to Carr. Carr, top of the circle. Hesitation, now drives right past Stovall, but explodes to the basket and lays it in. Wonderful move by Carr, as you see the promise that is there from such an athletic body in Carr. 71 to 49. Five minutes to go. Inside pass deflected by Kaylee Jones and Punk. And K-State out running the other way. Beard all the way to the basket. Running layup good. Beard with a new career high of 15. 71-51. Five minutes to go. Dawson Williams out of the game. K-State probably trying to save some of those starters for tomorrow. Stonewall thought about a three-point shot. Now it'll be put up left side by Stovall. Ray got good position and gets the rebound. Ray's played pretty well today for K-State. Simmons comes up the court for the Wildcats. Behind the back on the dribble, out on the left wing. Up top it goes to Carr. Eyeing up her defender. Carr will drive again all the way to the basket. Running layup, good! Carr's got six. 71-53, kind of what you said, Randy. If the three-point shot's not going, got to do something different. And she's so explosive. Two dribbles, and she's already at the rim. Stonewall over Ray. The contested shot not there. Then the follow is put up on the weak side by Millinder, who got position on Jones. And Jones playing with four fouls. Did not want to get a fifth. 73-53. DePaul doing just enough to stay out in front. Wildcats have done a lot of energy trying to get back into this game. They've cut the lead down to 15 at one point, but no closer. Beard, another pass to paint has it deflected and stolen. Gray sees Dolman linking out the other way, and she'll go in and lay it in. Nine for Dolman. Just like that, 22-point game again. 75-53 DePaul with 3.30 to go in the fourth. It's still pressing, no less. That's DePaul's game. They're not going to back off. Simmons across midcourt. It's a good learning lesson for K-State. And at the end, Jeff Benny mentioned that. And it was going to be a lesson very quickly on just how hard, how rough it's going to be in Big 12 play. Beard lighting up. DePaul hits a jumper from the right side. 17 points. We'll take a break. 3.08 to go. 75-55. Back after this word from your local stations on the K-State Sports Network from Learfield.
Wildcats down 20 with 2.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Three-pointer in the corner by Bekela will miss. The rebound pulled down by Stovall. She'll go up again. Bekela will, and it gets partially adjusted by Mary Lakes. Savvy Simmons needing some help to get out of a double team. Just throws it away, and it gets right back to DePaul, who goes to Bekela and lays it in. A little bit of panic there by the freshman point guard in Simmons. She'll get the ball here on the inbound and bring it up to the front court. 71-55, 77-55, I should say. 2.18 to go in the ballgame. K-State has cleared the bench for the most part. Beard, the only starter out there. Mackey, Lakes, Wiggins, who's now in the game. Wiggins driving in the lane. It got bumped and traveled with it. A couple of more subs here for DePaul. We'll clear them of starters. Stonewall, Dahlman will come out. Everyone available for K-State has played so far. Two minutes to go, 77 to 55. Back at it tomorrow morning, same time. Backdoor cut, held wide open, lays it in. Cats caught back, uh, napping a bit on the back side of that zone. So K-State has held the ball to three of 17 shooting from beyond the arc here in the second half. The damage was really done there in the first half, Brian, when they went nine of 22. Eighteen turnovers by K-State, nine of 22 shooting difference, no doubt. Wiggins crossing over her man, gets to the baseline, nowhere to go, now to Mackey. Mackey in the lane, good fake, pulls up for a jumper and hits. Well done by Laura Mackey. That's her first career field goal as a Wildcat. A minute 10 to go in the fourth, 79 to 57. K-State's gonna end up right about that 60 point mark, that's where they've been all season. And the ball right on their scoring average of 77. They have 79 at the moment. Mackela up high. Jolene Daniger, who's a redshirt freshman, is in for DePaul. Lakes gets the rebound off another miss of a three-pointer. The final three-point line is going to look terrible for DePaul, but as Randy said, the damage was done in the first half, building a 25-point lead at the break. Thanks to nine threes and 18 Wildcat turnovers. DePaul now 12 of 40 from behind the arc, and just three of 18 from long distance in the second half. Lakes just powering her way inside, spinning and scoring. Six for Lakes, 79 to 59, final 30 seconds. We'll hear from Jeff Eddy in our post game, previewing what's to come tomorrow, the last game of this tournament for K-State against Princeton tomorrow morning, same time. Beard with a steal on the near side to Simmons, final 10 seconds. Savvy out to Wiggins. Wiggins is going to shoot a three-pointer. That's off the mark. And the rebound to DePaul. They'll take it into the front court. And this game will end. 79 to 59. DePaul, the winner. They get to three and one on the season. K-State falls to three and two. And they'll try and at least capture one game of this Antoon Challenge tomorrow against the Princeton Tigers. More on that when we return on the K-State Sports Network from their field.